Welcome to the DraftKings Examining Cafe Value for Week 2. I'm with Russell Clay doing a breakdown here of our value uh, for what our optimizer spat out this week at each position. Uh, and overall, kind of just a, an overall look at this. How do you feel about kind of what came up? Very good. Um, I'd say overall this really matched up with where I was headed anyway. Um, now there's much debate on who you're going to go for in certain tiers. I mean, especially at quarterback, I kind of went in a different direction than Josh McCown, but, um, I mean, overall, yeah, no, I, I have a lot of these guys in my lineups and I mean, I, I went pretty heavy on tournament lineups this week. Um, cause I think there's a lot of versatile options, especially at running back. Um, but I, I, I definitely think this is dead on. So I, I like it. Yeah, I definitely do too. And, and jumping into quarterback here, um, pretty good. Obviously, you mentioned Josh McCown who pops up, but also Cam Newton and Eli Manning. So even with those price tags, it certainly looks like they're going to be able to pay it off pretty pretty well. Yeah, and Cam Newton is a guy I I like more on um, I like more on Fanduel. Uh, even at his advanced pricing, I just think the way those rosters are constructed, it's more viable to pay up. Um, but here, I still like it. Um, obviously cheaper than, you know, the Drew Breeses of the world. So I, I still think that's very viable. I like stacking him with Calvin. Um, maybe even go a little contrarian with stacking him with a high-end tight end like Greg Olson. I think that's in play. I even think you can throw a Ted Ginn in there. So I think Newton on here is more of a um, – a tournament guy for me just because I like the pay down options at quarterback this week on DK. But I mean, I'm not going to tell you not to play him in cash either. Yeah, different things. So and I, the one thing that I, I, I mean, I just kind of noticed right now, Eli Manning, only 300 less than Newton, who I feel like is kind of one of the top three options everyone's going to be using this week. FanDuel, yeah. it's a completely different story. It's closer to about 900 difference. So mm. that's one thing. You talked about not going the route of Josh McCown at 5K. I know there's a guy who is cheap who you're probably looking to replace him with. Yeah, I'm looking at Marcus Mariota. Let's just put it this way. I made 100 lineups this week. 35 of them have Mariota in them. So my tournament shares are heavily weighted towards you know that 6K price tag. I just love it so much. So versatile. I love his matchup. Um, it's not really that I have something against Josh McCown. You know, if Mariota was seven, uh, I'd probably definitely be diving down to McCown. But I just think it's easy, you know, to avoid him because uh, you can fit in pretty much whatever you want you know, with Mariota, who I think has much higher upside. So um, I love McCown for the tight end there, Gary Barnage, who we're going to get into in a second. But overall, I, I just think it's easier to go Mariota in that spot. And and as you mentioned with Eli, yeah, I don't need to get into, you know, the Saints-Giants matchup to, you know, um, talk you into that game. You're going to be playing that game, especially if you're in tournaments, especially if you're in cash. Um the way I've been kind of playing Eli, I just um, I think you can get Odell Beckham and basically have that be your exposure to Eli Manning, and that's kind of how I'm playing that in a lot of lineups. But obviously, I'm not against you know Eli against that Saints secondary. Yeah, I'm definitely in agreement. I like Eli quite a bit this week, and, and as a, you mentioned, I, I like Mariota over McCown for a thousand more. I think that that ceiling is quite higher. Um, diving into running backs here, you got three pass catching backs, um, all at really nice price tags, and all are in really good spots. Yeah, certainly. This is the a cash group for me if I've ever seen one. Um, all three have decent matchups. All three, you know, have that nice floor with their receptions and, and potential targets per game. Obviously, Chris Ivory out for, for TJ Yeldon this week. So um, we're going to see Yeldon getting basically feature carries like he did in week one against the Packers. Theo Riddick, I think, is actually pretty sneaky. A lot of people are going to be looking that, at that as a one-week wonder, and I think he has another really nice match up here where he can get you know get out in the open and uh you know hope bank on maybe Tennessee missing an assignment or something I, I think that's very viable once again um especially at 4300 especially with CJ Anderson Lamar Miller you know D'Angelo Williams and all these tremendous uh pay up options that I'm going to be paying up for um but if you're going in the direction of paying up at receiver I think Theo Riddick's very viable um as far as Danny Woodhead, cash option for me. I, I just think this is so easy. Um, I love Melvin Gordon. I am. I've I've loved Melvin Gordon since his first, you know, 
50 carry season at Wisconsin. I've been a huge fan all the way through, but they just don't. They're going to run their offense through Woodhead. I mean, I I just can't. I just watched it happen all last season, and that's just clearly the way they're going to go again. Now, that doesn't mean in the first half they're not going to, you know, throw some I formations out there and have Melvin, you know, get some carries. Uh, but by the end of the game, we know how the uh, the Chargers view this situation. And at, at you know, 5,200, I – I don't think there's anyone with a higher floor with price considered, you know? Yeah, I'm definitely in agreement. As you mentioned, there are high-end options, but I really like mixing and matching. I, mm. I feel like this is the week where, you know, obviously if you do want to pay up for wider series, you can go to cheap guys. But I think the balanced approach here, I mean, tossing a Woodhead and, uh, you know, a C.J. Anderson, pretty good back, and you can mm. even use Riddick in a flex spot. So uh, there's a lot of different ways you can go, especially on DraftKings with kind of how things shape up with those with those prices. And again, after I don't want to fade CJ Anderson or D'Angelo Williams right now. So I made a lot of lineups that had Woodhead, Riddick, and Yeldon as like that third guy in the flex. So I really love having these these guys in the flex this week. I think that's a really smart play. Yeah, definitely. Uh, jumping into wide receiver here, you actually got some value. In mine, I didn't get value prices. I got guys <laughs> to pay up for it. But um, Steve Smith, Jermaine Kerr is kind of the cheap options here, 35 and 4,300. Um, I actually don't mind Steve Smith this week. I like Steve Smith. Um, let's talk about Jermaine Curse though, for a second. If Russell Wilson was fully healthy, I'd be in. You know, 3,500 for Jermaine Curse. You know, we saw week one, he's going to get you that 10 to 12 points on a, on a regular basis. Maybe get that touchdown every four or five weeks and, you know, solidify that that value. But with his ankle, I mean, I just think the Rams are going to be able to get pressure. That doesn't mean... I think they're going to win. Um, I just think Robert Quinn and Aaron Donald are going to have a good game. So I, I think they're going to rely on the run game a lot more. Um, Seahawks shouldn't have much trouble with the Rams, but overall I'm just not totally buying that whole team. I just think there's easier ways to find value. The Jeremy Curleys, the Tyrell Williams. Um, I, I just think those guys are easier to roster and talk yourself into than, than a uh, Jermaine Curse this week. You, I, I think we could see one of those vintage Seattle games. And, and by vintage, I just mean they run the ball a ton. Uh, yeah, exactly. And, I mean, Wilson's still going to be back there. We know he's a great quarterback. He's going to be able to get it to his guys. But, you know, if that ankle's bothering him, he's not going to be able to push all the way through his throws. And, and it's just going to not be optimal Russell Wilson. So, I don't know. That's just a situation. If you want to go with it, I mean, obviously, the Cafe Value loves Doug Baldwin and Curse this week. That's fine. But I'm not taking the risk. It's a risky proposition proposition someone that's not quite as risky steve smith uh saw the most snaps of any ravens wide receiver in week one uh saw a bunch of targets didn't turn it into much but uh, they're not worried about him so i guess i shouldn't be against this brown secondary either um fire away i like mike wallace with the joe flacco stack um i like will fuller at this price range as well um, I kind of split up my, my fuller exposure to be much, much more prominent than Steve Smith. But overall, um, I think you can get exposure to both and feel pretty good about it. I do too. And I look at Steve Smith last week. You know what? Shake the cobs, cobwebs off because I, I like the Bills secondary. I like those two corners that were on him. I mean, I think they are above average corners. Much easier matchup this week against the Browns who are were bad. really – Yeah, I mean – They're bad letting Matthews and, and Aguilar go pretty freely most of that game. Uh, I think you're going to see Flacco and, and Smith kind of have a kind of an old time state game there and, and mm. put up some points. And again, you know, not many things in life are easy, but it doesn't take much to break down this, this Brown secondary. We don't, we don't need to, you know, dive into the advanced ad analytics of to tell you like the Browns defense and secondary is, you know, uh, bad. So you don't have to look deep into it too. Just know the Ravens have some really high upside receiving options this week. And I mean, I, I people are playing Dennis Pitt. I don't know if I'm in on that, but I mean, it is the Browns. So, you know, you take a shot, take a shot and throw in, throw in Dennis Pitt to some of your lineups, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for the value, I guess you can't <laughs> argue it. Um, Antonio Brown, 9,900, obviously always mm -hmm. the expensive option. 
you know, I'm always quite surprised when he pops up a little bit in the cafe value because it just seems like they just always bank on him paying off his monstrous price tag. And you know what? It, over the last year with Ben Roethlisberger in the lineup, he pretty much does every single time. Um, it's just he's incredible. Uh, they can't – they literally can't cover him. And, I mean, we can, like, think teams are going to double and bracket him. It just doesn't matter. Like, it just doesn't matter. I mean, I'm assuming this is – I'm not saying he's on Jerry Rice's level, but I'm assuming this is what it was like when Jerry Rice was in his prime. It's just like, what are you going to do? Yeah. Oh, we should guard Antonio Brown this week. Oh, yeah, we can't. We can't guard him. So he's just going to, you know, get 120 yards and a touchdown. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I mean, that's what we're doing. He should get 150 yards every week. Like, I, I don't know. That's just what I've seen as a sample the last two years, and I, I don't know. You know Throw what three guys on him, Bengals. Throw three guys on him, Bengals. That's the only way you can stop him at this point. <laughs> so, Cause... well, he, he might not pay off this price. You know, he might just randomly not get a touchdown this week. But in terms of process, I just think we have to trust him at this point. Um, like doubting him just hasn't worked out w- when Roethlisberger is in the lineup for literally the last, you know, year. Yeah. So. Yeah. It, there's, I mean, there are slates where you fade him. You're, you're probably not coming close. That's right. It's just there. He has those types <laughs> of games. And, you know, I think the big question this week is, you know, if I am choosing one Antonio Brown or OBJ, you know, you don't feel good about fading either. It's a tough position to right. be in. You you want to get them both in, but yeah, you don't feel good about having Antonio Brown without Odell Beckham, and you don't feel good about you know get, getting that extra four hundred for Odell Beckham. But I mean, how much? We don't know. Uh, it's tough. Both are tremendous options, and probably the best you know overall plays on the slate. Yeah, definitely. I I think the the matchup with the Saints just has OBJ slightly ahead for me, just slightly. <laughs> Yeah, that's where I'm headed to. Um, I had a lot of exposure to, to Odell Beckham as opposed to Brown. But, I mean, if you're making 20, 30 lineups, you really want one in pretty much every lineup unless you're getting, you know, really goofy. Yeah, definitely. Looking at tight end here, uh, a lot of great values at tight end this week on DraftKings. Um, starting with Delaney Walker, 4,500. I know you and I are both very high on him in week two. Well, I think, uh, and Barnage is the second guy here. I think we have very similar perspectives on both tight ends this week in terms of bad week one, but kind of optimistic still heading into week two. Um, Obviously, I wouldn't be as optimistic if Robert Griffin were still the quarterback of the Browns. I'd assume he would continue to air it out more. But with McCown back, I mean, we saw how dominant Barnage was with him last year. I think that should – that's a good bet, you know, at 4K. That's a good bet to bet on. I don't even mind him as a flex play. Um, just banking on, hey, maybe we see them shift back to Barnage being a prominent, you know, weapon as a dump-off guy with McCown. So I do like that quite a bit. And Walker, I mean, we could see Darius Slay. I'm not necessarily worried about him, but we could see him on Tajay Sharp if that's the case. Um, I mean, we saw the Colts tight ends of Jack Doyle and Dwayne Allen score three. You don't badmouth Jack Doyle. You got that? Jack Doyle sounds like a, a cowboy from like a Clint Eastwood film from the 70s. Jack Doyle. Yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, overall, I mean, I-, I think Delaney Walker is a great spot and cash game viable. Yeah, definitely. And they even tossed in a punt option here, Jacob Tammy, 2,900. You know, if things don't shape up where Julio's not 100%, Sanu's not 100%, I-, I guess you can make a case for Tammy. I mean... Yeah, I, I think so. Um, I mean, if you, again, if you want to get OBJ and Antonio Brown in a lineup, how are you going to do it? Um, you can get Mariota in at, at six, but if you still want a, a C.J. Anderson or, or something like that, you're going to have to pay way down somewhere. Um, and defense is obviously one alternative, but I think the other is tight end. Because um, as we mentioned, I mean, those two guys we like, both coming off terrible week ones. So as much as we like them, I mean, there are indicators heading in the other direction as well. So, yeah, I like Tammy as a punt. I, I think he's a nice value. 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think we're kind of focused on the rebound week, but you know, we, there, to be known that the floor could be lowered in 2016 for those guys. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, in terms of defense, I, I think you and I were pretty much in a disagreement with what came out for two of these teams. <sighs> I, I, I won't say like, I get the logic, you know, I get, okay, you know, this Char- Chargers-Jaguars game could be low scoring because, you know, these offenses are normally just scoring points when they're playing from behind. I just can't get behind it. I just see, let, let's say the Jaguars are up 28-3, to three, you know, in the third quarter. What does that mean? They're going to start to play vanilla defense and Danny Woodhead's going to get 17 receptions for 85 yards. And, you know, Phillip Rivers is going to end up throwing four touchdowns. You know, that's just – that's how both these teams work. So I have no confidence that the game flow of this game is going to hold up for either of these defenses. As we were talking about before the show, always a chance of a Blake Bortles, you know, pick six. So Chargers – I'm not against the Chargers fully, but I, I can't totally get behind these, especially in a cash game situation. Yeah, I think, you know, you and I were talking, it's like, how do the Chargers pay off that price tag? And it, it seems like a pick six was needed. You know, yeah. you, you, you look at this total and, and you know, above 20, you expect you expect the Jags to put up some points, whether it's garbage time, whether they just come out and, and start throwing the ball all over the place. But I, I get the bare min play. I get that. I don't know. I, I can't get behind either of those ones. Patriots 3K, that I can get behind. Yes, sir. Um, So the two... Two defenses I'm really running out there a lot this week are the Ravens and the Patriots. I think those are tremendous options. Um, As mentioned, Josh McCown is back at quarterback, which for for fantasy circles, we get a little excited for, you know, the dump offs. But for a real football perspective, I mean, that's a terrible thing if Josh McCown's your starting quarterback. (laughs) So um, uh, I'm in on the Ravens. I'm in on the Patriots. They're both reasonable prices. They're not that much more expensive than, you know, the Chargers or the Jaguars. I see a lot of people are on the Raiders this week. I, I'm not diving down there, even though I do like some of their pieces. Um, I, overall, I just I just feel would feel a lot more comfortable, you know, with, with the Patriots against a Miami team. You know, we joke about Danny Woodhead getting 15 receptions. Jarvis Landry is going to have – 15 receptions for 55 yards, you know? <laughs> like, that's, that's You look at that Miami offense, it's not built to score touchdowns. No, it's not. It's really not. <laughs> so, I, Pat's a 3K. I, for the Chargers, for 500 more, I'd just rather spin up to the Patriots. I think that's where you kind of rather had. Absolutely. Let's wrap things up with the examining DraftKings value for week two. Be sure to check out our optimizer and content at dailyfantasycafe.com. Also, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and give us a couple of likes if you like what you see or you like Russell's beautiful face. Oh, oh they definitely don't like what they see, but I mean, maybe they like the content. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys in week three.